Well, hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. It's another episode of this little Martha Boy steam engine build. I say I'm pretty impressed with the way this is going together. The castings are pretty nice. It's we had a hiccup last week, but really it was my fault. And everything that is in the drawing so far has been pretty easy to do. This is just a quick video. We need to make up a block which sits on here and is silver soldered on or soft soldered on eventually. And we're going to make it out of this piece of brass solid because that's sort of all we got. There's the inch square and there's enough room in it to make it. So first thing is to set it up in the three drawer and face the ends the same as we did with the last bit. So that it's a, a good fit between there and there. And then we're just going to make him all nice and square and parallel. So first thing I'm going to set this up. We have a light on. My hacksaw cut's not real clean there, but I'm just going to face this end off. There's been a few comments, and I'll address them. While I'm facing this and getting it nice and square, I'm not pulling the tool back out of the out of the job because then I've got to work out every time how long or how much more to take off and reset this dial. So what we gotta what I've done and it's only brass and it's a nice sharp tool. It's just wound that back. It doesn't do anything for your surface finish at all. So on the last cut, we'll do that. But a lot of those sort of things are edited out of my videos, otherwise you end up with extremely long boring videos of things being turned. And I'm not sure anyone wants to sit there and do that and watch that. So as far as actual machining goes, you get about 10%. So next job, making sure everything's nice and clean, we'll turn that around. And we'll just face it till this just cleans up, it should still be long enough. We're going to measure it. So what we're looking for is something that will fit in there. So it needs a bit more off it yet. So we'll keep going. So there we go. We've faced both ends and got that to 16 30 which is a really nice fit in there. So a bit of a hairline through there, we might have filed a little bit out of the corners here to make it fit nice. But it's not too bad. Next job we need to make it an oblong, which needs to be 540,000 by 800,000. So the first thing will be to machine one side off until it's just on 800,000 there. We're going to do that in the four jaw. It doesn't matter much where it's set up even. But that's... That's probably the easiest way, just to get the first face right. Next operation is to set him up in the fore jaw. And that way around, make sure there's enough sticking out to actually make a big enough flat on the side that you want. So it's 800 to hour across there and that's about an inch. I've put a couple of bits of copper on the ends there just to stop the jaws marking the nice machine surface. And 
you can set him up with a DTI this way or it's not a bad idea perhaps to check it and I have done that's running pretty sweet but if your jaws in your four jaw or your four jaw chucks any good at all you shouldn't have any problems at all with this if you try if you if you clamp this end up first this end and then just tighten these on it to stop it moving then this side's going to be square or well, this side's going to be at 90 degrees to this side or it should be check it anyway but any decent forge or chuck that should be how it is so that's a pretty easy setup and we're going to get in With all this rain, I've got a bit of an overload somewhere in the circuit, and I keep getting an error message on my BFD. But I guess it's going to get wetter this weekend before it gets drier, so we might have to live with that. Anyway, our next job is to machine this down. Now, when you set up a when you take that first cut off there, this line here should be pretty parallel each end. You should have taken about the same amount off one end as the other. And if you haven't, there's something wrong. So that's a good way to sort of tell. Also a good idea to check this, and someone commented about my last video that my tool steel was in the in the, the tool holder on a bit of an angle and the reason for that is so that it sticks out past the corner here and past this corner and if you machine something a bit longer you don't want it to touch on your tool post so that's the reason for that anyway let's take him down 800 down so that's down to about 830 thou wide there and nice nice finish I did back the tool out and wind the, wind the back so there's two ways you could do this. You could turn this over and set it up in parallels and machine the other side to thickness. And that's one way to do it. The other way is just to turn it quarter of a turn in here. And then this jaw, if it's nice and square, it should align this one here. And the next face will be at 90 degrees to it. And these two jaws should align the ends this way. So it should be at 90 degrees to them too. So let's turn it around and clean up the next side. So there we go, that's the setup. If you're not real comfortable with holding all these bits in here um, in a vertical position, which is a bit tricky sometimes, slip the chuck off, sit it on a couple of pieces of something in the, or a couple of tool holders or whatever, something nice and solid on the bench and set it up that way. And um, put him on afterwards, yeah, that's easy. Uh, I've checked this with the DTI again and it's within nothing really it's there's no run out on it these copper shims because they're all a little bit big now because they're copper you can just turn them down so we'll just clean this up until this is 580 thou wide or a little bit wider and we'll do it again try and if we try and zoom you in there with the camera you might be able to see that You've got a nice parallel line there, and that means that it's nice and square and straight. And that's all it's got to be. So, we're going to clean that up now. So that's about 590 across there now, and anyone building this engine is going to discover that a piece 800 by 506, 580 thou, is only just going to clean up out of a bit of inch brass. So. That's all right, we'll just have to be a bit careful. So that's two sides done, or four sides, the ends and that one and that one. Next job is to turn it another quarter of a turn. And machine it down so it just cleans up there, and then we're gonna measure the thickness there. And start worrying about overall dimensions. So I've sort of realised this isn't real critical and I've puzzled a bit on how to measure it or how to how to get it somewhere near right. 
but when we look at the drawings the hole that goes through the center is just marked in the center with a pair of dividers so that's pretty straightforward it doesn't have to be measured the ports are just in from each end and there's plenty of clearance on them and everything else is sort of relative to the rest of the engine so it doesn't matter a whole lot what I'm going to do is just clean this up so that there's a sharp edge on this corner and do the other corner the same way and we'll measure it and see what we've got and there we go that's the final setup so I've got four pieces of copper you don't want to push out on the ends or it's not going to sit flat here and you need to make sure that every time you set these up that none of this copper's got any burrs on it so it's all fit nice and flat um, against the, the piece of brass and against the jaws it's not a bad idea to give them a rub on a piece of emery paper or something and if you, you do cut into them then you end up with with a sharp edge where the where the burr comes off so you've got every time you set it up you've got to clean them up anyway that's all nice and square let's get in the machining down so that there's a square corner on both sides and we're going to call that done so that was the last operation and I've just broken the edges a little bit with a little file that's what we've got we've got a block that is actually 810 thou wide that way and it's about 10, 15 thou under that way so it's not a huge deal uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem either way and that fits in there nicely so that's a good start on the valve block if we have a look at our engine that sits on there somehow like that so that's looking pretty good Anyway, it's time to call it a night. It's getting a bit late. I've just done this after work, or after tea, actually. It didn't take me long to make that up. And it's plenty good enough. With a bit more care and a couple more operations, you can get it exactly the size, if you're that way inclined. But I think that's going to do the job. We can make that work. And thanks for watching. More soon. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment and be kind to each other.